we have the minutes from the June 8th meeting. Uh, entertain a motion to approve, or anyone have any edits they want to suggest? So move. And a second. Second. Um, why don't we turn to you, Kim, for your report? Sounds good. Good evening, everyone. A um, couple updates to share with you. Uh, we had work done uh, in our fitness center that wrapped up this morning. Mm. Uh, we unfortunately had to have the fitness center closed yesterday uh, and then work uh, finished uh, this morning on. We added a UV film to the windows in the fitness center. Um, and that film is designed to do just that, to keep out UV rays. So as the sun's coming in those windows, it helps uh, minimize those uh, the rays coming in as well as then helping keep the room a little cooler in the summer. Um, you know, helps keep some of the heat out of the room and then the opposite in the winter. It's gonna help keep some of the heat in. And so we think that's been a really great addition uh, to that space to help keep that space nice and comfortable for fitness center members. Um, so far, feedback's been positive, but that was installed <laughs> this morning. So we'll see see how that goes. Um, there may be some additional windows throughout the building that we want to install that on, but we want to just kind of see what the feedback is so far um, with the fitness center being complete. It, it is um, not entirely clear. It uh, You can see just a little bit of a tint from the inside. So it feels a little bit kind of warmer. Um, not quite, a, again, not quite as much bright sun coming through. Um, but we want to get some feedback before we look at potentially expanding um, that anyplace else. Also looking at the windows, I've been mentioning across several of our meetings that window repair is also up and coming, um, not window itself, but the sill around the window. And that huge project will be underway soon. We're anticipating a probably late August, maybe September start date on that. Um, it, we will need to shut down parts of the building throughout that time for those windows to be repaired. So as we have that schedule confirmed, I'll certainly let you know, and we'll be communicating that to all of our members, um, but it will be closing various sections of the building in order to have those windows repaired. Um, we'll minimize the closures as best as we possibly can, but unfortunately repair does need to happen and we'll, we'll stay running as smoothly as we can during the work. The only other thing I'll mention in terms of the building at the moment is that we are also working to have the pool tables resurfaced. Um, we'll have both of them resurfaced and have one of them, they're kind of too close together. So we're going to move one a little bit closer to the door to give more room for the billiards players um, as they're playing on both tables. Um, that work will look to have completed. We're working to, to confirm a vendor now and we'll look to get that started um, after the window project's done just to make sure that project happens first. But they are the 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 items in the building at the moment uh, that we're looking at and have either um, upgraded or will be in the midst of upgrading soon. Looking at our programs and services, um, again, thrilled to share that in the month of June, we had 78 orientations that we completed. So we are continuing to see a lot of individuals come through the door either for the first time or for the first time in a while. <laughs> we had 45 new uh, new attendees and 33 returning. Um, so that gives us the total of 78. The Bistro, we served 530 lunches over the month of June. And for June, we saw an average daily attendance of about 170. Uh, so again, this time last year, we had 100 people, approximately 100 people a day um, come into the building. And now we have approximately 170. So continuing to be thrilled with meeting new people, welcoming new people, um, getting to know new people. And, and it's just been a, a, a testament, I think, to the team creating a welcoming environment. And it's been also a testament to the media and marketing efforts in terms of getting people aware of what's happening in the building and the services that we provide. A couple of programs to highlight, and there are many, so I'm going to give you a condensed list. Uh, we continue to have tech support offered through Northampton High School students, and so they are here doing both one-on-one -on -one support as well as workshops. Um, they've done a, an email uh, workshop, and we also are putting forth some efforts in terms of digitizing photos, so you'll see some of that in addition to, again, those one-on-one -on -one tech support times uh, where anybody can bring in a device of 
laptop of whatever their questions are around technology, uh, the interns can help with that. We also have a new fitness offering. It's called Strong and Steady. And that's designed, um, I think this is a unique class for us, at least in the, the most recent past, because it combines, it's, it's geared towards fitness center members and people that are already using the fitness center. And it's meant to kind of optimize their fitness center routine in a small group setting. So it's really small group training in a lot of ways. And that class size is limited to six. And part of the class occurs in the fitness center. The other part of the class occurs in the activity room uh, with some other exercises there. But so far that's had a cap of six and we've had six people sign up for that class. So that has been popular and we'll continue to offer that. And again, that's through our partnership with the YMCA. And so that um, that's been great. Another group I just wanted to point out is a, a small but mighty group at the moment. On Friday mornings, we have the Con Street Rock and Roll Music Group. And, and really, that, that it's awesome. It is totally awesome. It is, a, it is a small group of people who are willing to have people join their group and want to welcome new members. Um, but what they are really doing is they wanted a time to listen to music together. So there is a CD player in there and attendees are welcome to bring whatever music they'd like to listen to. And you know, sometimes they get coffee from the coffee shop and bring it over. It, it really is just a social time gathered around sharing music and 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 more, quite frankly. But it is built around music. And so if you come in on Friday mornings, a lot of times they leave the door open and you can hear anything. Oh, I don't know, Lauren Blanken on now, some of what we've heard, but I think between um, the Beatles and <laughs> Rolling Stones and lots of Tina Turner after she unfortunately passed away. So uh, a lot of music that you hear uh, Friday mornings, um, specifically in the bistro, but not always played quietly and also heard in the lobby. <laughs> but, That's great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> Uh, a couple larger events just to bring your attention to is uh, we have an ice cream social. I know I mentioned this last month. Um, that's coming up on July 28th, and that's sponsored by the Friends of the Northampton Senior Center. We also are putting together uh, details on what we're calling an anniversary party. Um, that's going to happen on Friday, September 29th. So I did want to mention that to the group and see if, if you would like to attend um, as well. I'll share more information. I don't have it right in front of me at the moment, but all of that is built around the anniversary of the Senior Center building opening. Um, and we are, we'll be 16 years in right around that date. So <laughs> it's kind of a 16th anniversary party. Uh, so I'll, I'll share more details with that, but certainly keep that date in mind. And, and again, I'll, I'll, give you time specific information um, as I know more. The big announcement, drum roll please, um, is that starting on September 5th, which is a Tuesday, um, we are going to remain open until seven o'clock every Tuesday evening. Um, we did have evening hours prior to COVID and uh, that has something that, uh, unfortunately one of those things that COVID had stopped um, and we've recognized the need that, uh, that, that people being Monday through Friday, eight to four, isn't reaching everybody that we could reach. And so there has been some demand for us to have some evening hours, and we're going to start with one evening a week, and that's going to be Tuesdays. So we'll be open from eight in the morning till seven o'clock p.m. on Tuesdays. Uh, we'll, we will work to close the fitness center around 645, which is what we do now. We close the fitness center at 345. Uh, we are working on programming that will more than likely be a some sort of exercise class with the YMCA, as well as some other classes. Um, we are putting some of those pieces in place. Uh, we're also, again, trying to work around the window schedule. So <laughs> September may not be as robust as you see in, in October and moving beyond, but we're excited to be able to be open one night a week um, to have people be able to come to the building for programs or to play billiards or the, use the fitness center or or just hang out for that matter. So uh, thrilled to be able to offer an evening an evening uh, starting in September. Can you pause uh, for a sec? Can you just pause for a sec? Sure. Because you give, you've given us a lot of stuff. I just want to see if anyone has any reactions or any questions before before you give us more good news. Let's just pause to get. <laughs> I think the seven o'clock hours is great, obviously, for someone like me. Um, you know, um, certainly I'll certainly be able to take advantage of that. So that's that's fabulous. And I guess I would just add that I'm just continue to be stunned every week by every meeting that we have, Kim, by what we're hearing. I mean, it's all so positive and just want to express a special thanks. And, you know, it's uh, it's really nice to hear all these great things. So thank, thank you. you. 
Thank and you. And I, I love the, the film. It's a minor, I know, but I love the window film solution. Mm -hmm. It just, I, I don't know why, it just sort of hit, hit me that, wow, what a great idea. Yeah, and I and and to go, you know, one thing I did want to mention with that too, and I and I will keep this brief, but we have talked a lot with members uh, regarding the temperature in the building. It can certainly be challenging at times, um, but one of the things that sometimes is a misconception is that people think, um, you know, usually the conversation begins with, "I know this is controlled remotely, so therefore you have no control over it." The first half of the sentence is correct. <laughs> um, Central Services controls our heat and air conditioning remotely. But having said that, um, we do have the ability to modify the temperature by a couple degrees here in the building. And also having said that, Central Services couldn't be a more wonderful partner in the process. So anytime we've had concerns about how warm or cold the building has been, um, it is a simple phone call to them who quickly respond and make whatever adjustments we need to have made. And so it's been an ongoing conversation with them to make sure that the temperatures are set at, at the temp that the set point is where we need it to be. And then any adjustments we need to make from there, um, they very willingly and very um, knowledgeably make with us. And so that film on the windows was really through some of that conversation on, on how best to keep the, the building at comfortable temperatures. And so um, if, if there is any conversation that you're hearing around um, the heating and the air conditioning, yes, it is controlled remotely from the building, but we do have some control here in the building and it's a close partnership with central services. And I can't speak highly enough of them in this process. So just to clarify any misconceptions around that. That's good the ice cream social? Ice cream social is the 28th. So thanks. I, didn't, I just, thanks for pausing. I just wanted to give people an opportunity re to react. So, so do continue with good news. All right. More good news. Uh, we have uh, a lunch and learn, uh, as mentioned, we're doing a lot of lunch and learn series. And one I want to specifically call out is August 8th. We are having a uh, police chief, Jody Casper come um, and talk about Northampton police department, talk about her amazing 25 years <laughs> with the department and kind of what she's seen with policing. So she'll be here at the Senior Center on August 8th. We also, uh, again, have the Doozy Do Parade set up and we are officially registered for that. So just again, under uh, collaboration, I'll mention that. And two other things that I do wanna mention uh, before we move on in the agenda is that uh, Megan has been working hard and looking at our Chronicle as well as Constant Contact. I know I mentioned this at the last meeting, just in terms of the format, uh, how things look. And there's a couple changes that I, I would ask that, that you look at as you're looking at the Chronicle. And if you do get our Constant Contact email messages, uh, we've done some reorganizing of some of the information in the Chronicle. Um, the lunch and learn events are right next to the bistro. So we've just made some, some changes that I think that you'll be happy with, but would certainly appreciate your feedback as you're looking at that and as we continue to make modifications to make sure that it's readable, accessible, and also well-organized. So I think we're headed in the right direction. We have a strong product anyway, uh, but I think we're headed in the, in the right direction with those. But one other thing I wanted to specifically call out is the constant contact. Um, we, we've gotten feedback that that has been a bear of an email, uh, that it just has been long and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you're still reading information um, several minutes later. And so there's really been an effort made to condense some of that and really focus on what's happening on the upcoming week. Uh, but the whole constant contact has been redesigned so that you there's clickable flyers on it. So it takes less time to scroll through it, but if there's something that you wanna look at closer, you can click on it. It will open up as a flyer in your browser. So it's large, readable. You can print it out if you'd like to print it out. And so if you're not already getting our email blasts and would be interested in, in receiving those and taking a look at those for us, please let us know. And if you are receiving them, um, if you would not mind opening that up and, and taking a look at it um, with a critical eye to, to see what you think, um, you know, is it is it meeting the need? Is it readable? And, and is it somewhat a little bit more succinct? Um, there is a lot going on and we do <laughs> have a lot to highlight, but we also don't want to have people scrolling endlessly to get through a lot of information. And so uh, please take a look at that if you don't mind and offer feedback, because uh, I think we're trying to certainly make that a little more user friendly as well, but also get the needed information across. 
I never got added to that list for okay. constant contact. And you'd like to be Bob? Yes, please. Okay. So if people aren't on the list, they can just email Kim. Sure. Actually, if you don't mind, yeah, just send me an email and that way that will got confirm it. that. Yeah, just, I mean, I have emails yeah, for it. Just to right there in front of you, make it easier to do. To the email you need. Yep. Sounds good. And that's all that I, that's all that I have. It's great. Any any comments or questions before we move on? I want to find out on the uh, ice cream social. Do you have any music scheduled for it? We do not. Um, we do not because we the were rock and roll group. That's right, right. We don't. We don't at that. We are planning some events coming up that that we are looking for music for, but we do not. We don't have anything planned for that one. Um, the I think the the focus was was more on it being conversation um, and trying it really as a time to 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 talk with one another. And so we don't for that one, but we do have for have entertainment for some upcoming things. I made a note and I quickly forgot, but now reminded myself. I'm intrigued that the high school students are still offering their services during the summer, mm -hmm. which is pretty huge. Mm -hmm. And I'm that's awesome. What whatever Megan's contacts at the Gazette, that seems like that's a really nice Gazette article. A real feel good about the partnership and these kids doing mm -hmm. volunteering their time during the summer and what mm -hmm. you said about digitizing photos, the whole package. Yep. It's one of those it's good news now, stories. Exactly. All right. Um date on age and dementia friendly initiative. We have we're, we're pretty close to being formally formally acknowledged an age-friendly community a number of years ago. The dementia-friendly formalization is a slightly different process, but we have signed all of what needs to be signed. So we are um, like a step away from being official, you know, being able to be an official dementia-friendly community. Um, and it's the Massachusetts Association of Councils on Aging that leads that effort in the state. So that's really, I think, the biggest update since we last met. So did everyone have the chance to read the modifications to the member guide mm -hmm. yes. that went from a zillion pages down to mm -hmm. a few pages? Cindy, I'm wondering, um, can we just give a really quick overview for Adrian, um, just maybe history and what we're looking Thank at? You. Mm -hmm. So, Adrian, there was a member guide, member meaning us, that was developed a number of years ago. It was outdated, and it was also extremely long and confusing. So at the last meeting, we decided, we went through it, and we made recommendations of what could be deleted, what could be compressed, et cetera, et cetera. So I took all of those notes and hopefully captured everything that was said and that draft is what was sent in the meeting package. Um, so people have hopefully had a chance to read it and any comments, suggestions, changes, any of that. No, I think it looked fine. Yes, Jean. I think it looked fine. I think it's ironic that we fall under open meeting laws because we have no jurisdiction. We, we, I run, we fall under what? I missed the first part. Open meeting laws. Well, because, because we're a municipal com committee entity. I know, but we have no jurisdiction. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's one of the things they mentioned. So, oh, um, I know. It doesn't, you no. know, it doesn't matter. So, like, if I talk to somebody else uh, um, and even talk about something, there is no, but we don't really have this, that many, like, what decisions do we make that are, I mean, it's, it feels to me, um, I know. It was just, it was, it was I thought, oh, I, that, I thought the summary that was done was excellent, actually. Thank you. So, so think Brick Commission. They, they're they similar to us. They don't make decisions. They're a municipal entity. Okay. You know, there are a number of boards and commissions that obviously oh, make sure. decisions. I know. And others that are simply advisory. So, yeah. So, um, if there are no changes, let's make the decision that we're going to formally adopt the member guide, what really is our roles and responsibilities. 
mm -hmm. that works for everybody. So we have we can take an official vote and use that as our guide and help brand new to our world. Or um, Adrian, you get to read this one in much quicker time than the other one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did, and I did read it over. Yeah, so I familiarized myself with it. Good. My editor. So, um, my editor's brain says responsibility right, right up at the top. Oh, I just, oh, thank you. Oh my God. I just, <laughs> I, you know, you, you forest for trees. As soon as it was out of your mouth, I went, oh my God. <laughs> thank you. Any other odd ones like that that you picked up? No, I think just gram grammatically, Cindy, the only thing that um, line four also, just to keep it consistent, there was an abbreviation of senior service. Line senior yep. service departments. So there's an S on the end of departments. And if we want to spell out senior, because you did in other places as opposed to the abbreviation there. You see where it's I'm talking lazy, about? Apparently. Yes, Gene. And that's just small. I don't think it. I don't think it has a, I didn't read it like that, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think that kind of it has an apostrophe. You know, um, an orientation to the COA and its role, Role. I think IT apostrophe S is re exclusively an it is. Gotcha. I, I didn't read it for, I didn't read it like to, as an editor, only for, you know what I mean? So. Where, what line? I'm, not, I'm missing it. I'm not seeing. Oh, there, just got it, got it, got it. Just saw it. Okay. So, entertain a motion to approve the dated roles and responsibilities guide with edits. Motion. Second. Where's the second. Thanks, Bob. All in favor? Bye. Good. We have now updated ourselves. Um, and this is our guide in a much shorter fashion. Which I think will again continue to make it easier for everyone. Um, we have this may be less than an hour meeting, Adrian. Um, <laughs> we've introduced our new member. Yeah. And the membership packet provided by the city clerk. I'm looking yes, to you. I, yes, I can um, jump in on that. I just wanted to share that. I mean, as we've had conversations around bylaws and guides and administrative code, I just wanted to revisit. This is the packet that is shared uh, by the city clerk when someone is appointed to uh, to a council. So this would, is the material that Adrian recently received as well as Mark. Um, and we do also have Karen Linz that is in the process um, as our ninth uh, member. So once okay. she's fully approved um, and sworn in, um, then we will have her join us as well. Um, so this is material. Um, and, and if you all choose to, <laughs> to, um, to look at membership uh, past your terms as well. Um, this would be information that you would receive again. But kind of as we were talking about all these pieces, just seemed to make sense that this is the other piece of, you know, as we're eliminating bylaws and now uh, have approved this membership guide, this is the other piece of materials that people are given as they as they are brought on board um, yeah, as did, a, new, a new council. It looks familiar. Yeah. So, but thanks for including that. Mm-hmm. Are there any other agenda items that other biz, I love this phrase, not foreseen when agenda was published? That's right. So I, I had a question about that code of conduct and responsibilities. Is that something, is that new or that's a part of the package that we were given when we joined the council? It wasn't in a, it was, it says city of Northampton on the top of it. Did we sign something when we joined? Yeah, I remember signing some. I remember signing mm -hmm. several things. Yeah. Yeah. I yes, know what I signed, signed, but I remember signing. So that's nothing new then. Okay. Yeah. Um, Does it change? Oh. I don't know. Do you know? 
I I don't know if there's been any changes. My understanding is um, just as I was working with the city clerk is that this is the same information that you all would have received. So if there have been changes, there's not been anything recent. I was amused that the, um, I forget, what was it the either, whichever one came from the then attorney general, now governor, um, is as old as 2018. So it was. I was amused that that looks like it hasn't been updated, mm -hmm. or certainly not, at least put a new cover on it for the new with the new attorney general's name on it. It's just amusing. Oh, is that where that comes from? Yes. It says that the cover sheet says Office of the State Attorney General has more Healy, 2018. That's when she was in that role. Yeah. Huh. Had mm -hmm. me laughing. Yeah, they're they're the ones who are legally responsible for enforcing. Oh, okay. So abide by it, or else you'll have the attorney general come knocking at your door. <laughs> are there any, any other documents that we would want to take a look at um, that are associated more with our role? There's no. Hmm. There really isn't anything. I mean, there's no, there's no. I think what we what we had was what we just revised. Yeah. Yeah. The other, how Kim, do you have any sense of how long the administrative code is? The cities. The entire code. Um. Well, maybe uh, if others are interested, maybe just sending us a link to because I know it's online. A link just because I think in the terms of other documents since that's what started our whole issue about the number of people in the COA for when you have nothing else better to read was just to get a glance at the city administrative code, which mm -hmm. is the governing entity, which is why mm -hmm. our bylaws were in fact irrelevant because sure. the admin code supersedes all of that. What, what I can do is I can send the link out to everyone and then we'll add it on the agenda for the next meeting for new business. If there's right, in case anyone has any about it, yeah. questions about it. But I just thought in the, to your point, Val, are there any other documents? That was that was the big one that allowed us not to meet for a while. Uh, questions, comments, next so meeting. What, with what is the um, uh, full number of people on the council? Um, is it what nine? We the the requirement, the new requirement, the admin code is that the COA is a nine member body. Yes, so you can't exceed nine. Mm. Does that include know. Kim? It makes five a quorum. What, no. Jean? Does that include that? Doesn't include Kim, so we still aren't up to um where we should be. Yeah, but yeah. With nine is nine is the new number, so we have eight now with Mark and, and Ms. What was the person's name? Uh, Karen Linz. Karen Linz. Oh, I didn't know there was another person. Uh, it, so, it came in earlier. Yeah, so there's a put in the pipeline. I believe was the phrase you used. <laughs> yeah, I yes. think yes. I believe that yes, that she, as Adrian can attest to, and as you all can attest to, it's multiple steps in the process. Uh, yes. so I yes. I don't believe at this point all of those steps have been gone through, but they are well on the way. That's great. Is is it okay if I just ask Adrian what her background is? Like, is that an okay thing to ask at a meeting? Adrian, why why are you with us? Who are you? Oh, and why are you here? Well, I'll point the finger at Mike Ford. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, who highly recommended that I um, join and you know encourage me and all of that. So I have retired from Smith College. Um, uh, when was it? Oh my gosh, maybe 2011. I was I served as their ombuds person, and um, let's see. And so then this I was a humble woman. <laughs> this woman started here in the anthropology department. Uh, did a fantastic job. Moved on to University of Pittsburgh, but then was called back. She has family in the area. She's been connected to the senior center. I'm surprised many of you don't know her. She's worked that's at the. What, I, yeah, that's right. I thought you might start. Years. How uh, long have you been doing a lot of volunteer work, haven't you? Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Ford. You know, obviously, you're, you're, you, you come <laughs> equipped with a PR agent. Yeah, and yeah. she's been to the Age and Dementia Friendly Committee, too, hasn't she, Cindy? Yeah, yeah. you were involved in that at yeah. the beginning, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, welcome you're again. You're a hand raiser. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. a hand raiser from way back. Go. She's a hand raiser, G. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's a nice so. way to put it. I haven't heard that before, but I'm going to remember it. Yeah. yeah. I think I made it up. Well, I guess we're all hand, hand raisers to an extent because we wouldn't be here if we weren't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I've I've been um, involved with the Senior Center, I think, um, since Linda Desmond. I was going to uh, say, that's when I first met you, and Linda yeah, was there. Yeah. 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 And I knew Linda from the being on the board of United Way um, way back in the day. So, you know, it's just kind of a, a growing network of folks. And uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so. We're all oh, dating welcome. ourselves by these references. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So the next, our next meeting is August 10th. And that will be an in-person meeting. Adrian, what we've decided to do is we, Every other month, we're fully remote like this mm -hmm. to try and make it. But um, so this is obviously a fully remote meeting. And then on the 10th, we are in person at the senior center. Okay. At the same time? Uh, five o'clock. Yep. And Cindy, can I, I just clarify as well um, what we were hoping was a commitment from the council to be in person, but we were also including a hybrid option for people that may not be able to attend. Is that correct? We absolutely, you know, our, our goal is to have as many people in person as possible. Um, but yes, there is always the opportunity to join remotely. Right, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for a, a short and efficient meeting. Yeah, I didn't have, have to leave. Day. Didn't have to leave early. Good. Right, you didn't have to leave <laughs> early. Um, exciting information and um do you need any help from any coa members in planning the anniversary shindig we 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 may let we'll get let me coordinate a couple other details with the team here and and i will uh reach out and okay. talk to people great way to get people involved in 16 years yeah and you said September 29th is the date. 29th. Let me just double check off the. That, that's what I wrote. Yeah, that's 29th. Yes. Okay. That's what you said. And the ice cream social is this month, right? Correct. Which, which 28th. Month? Ice cream social is the 28th. And I want to. I want to put in. I know Kim mentioned it in passing, but I want to go back the doozy do parade. <laughs> Some of us on this screen, in a Ghostbuster <laughs> uniform participated it would be wonderful if we could have more coa members it was a blast and it's a terrific fundraiser for our friends and northampton neighbor friends and colleagues they made a significant number amount of money last year much more than i think they had initially expected which is certainly why they're doing it again i just had an email today about it separately so if Encourage people to plan to do it. We can figure out a theme. Um, last year it was sort of last minute, so we didn't, but we've got plenty of time to figure out what, how we want to show up. Maybe something related to six, being 16. Do you put on skirts? Yes, 16. <laughs> some, I mean, some riff on something that, that yeah, the step people were, I still, the, um, Folks at Forbes Library, I, I'm Kim. Do you remember the details? But all I, I just remember it was so creative, and, and they had these like cutouts of books and stuff. It was just they put a lot of time into it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, other people did. It's just a, yeah. And what what's the date for that one? September September twenty third. Okay. It was a, it's a Saturday or Sunday, I forget. It's a it's downtown. Saturday. It went from the um Holly Street 
by sort of by where the fine arts center is down to Pulaski Park. That's a Saturday. Okay, that mm -hmm. makes sense, yeah. Okay, um, motion to adjourn. So moved. There you go, thanks, Bob. There's way exactly. <laughs> Great, um, we'll see everyone on August 10th. Yeah. Stay cool, right. stay dry, I think yeah. is the yeah. operative term. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good, good night. night. Everybody. Take care. Good night. Good night.